The Birth of Radio, read by Oliver Fry. Marconi's invention of radio communication met with disinterest from the authorities in Rome. So, he came to England to fulfill his ambition and made Chelmsford his technical home. He set up his radio factory in Hall Street, but soon production could not meet demand. Another plant was established in New Street as wireless radio spread throughout the land. To promote his system of sound transmission, all that was needed was ministerial permission. He planned to broadcast a concert as the ultimate test with Dame Nellie Melba as the celebrity guest. Since no studio existed at the New Street site, a packing shed was swiftly converted for the night. So, with the world-famous soprano due to appear, the test was what the listening public would hear. On the 15th of June, 1920, just after 7pm, history was made. The foundation for live radio broadcasting was laid. With added sponsorship from the national press, Dame Nelly's concert was a resounding success. Yet, by November, Marconi was downcast and nervous. The post office citing interference with legitimate service suspended all the broadcasts. The military added, it makes no sense and it is not in the best interests of imperial defence. A public outcry ensued and the objections were dropped. The future of public broadcasting could not be stopped. Marconi's airborne telephony needed more space. In Rittle, an ex-army hut was to become its new base. The station's call sign was 2MT, or 2 Emma Toc, although when it started its regular service was still ad hoc. Meanwhile, in London, at Marconi House, a second station called sign 2LO was made ready and began to broadcast to the nation. Next came the BBC, the British Broadcasting Corporation, which realised Marconi's dream of mass communication. Looking back, though, on the 15th of June 1920, it's safe to say, from a shed in Chelmsford, radio was born that day. <laughs>